Welcome to Reading a Devotion with me. Today we are reading July 10th from My Utmost First Highest by Oswald Chambers. And it is called The Spiritually Lazy Saint, Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. Before we get into it, let's just pray. Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you've done and how you've reached out from eternity and you have touched our lives, God. And I pray that you would um, be with us, Lord, as we're reading or listening, God, that your sweet presence would speak into our hearts and we would be challenged to be more today than we were yesterday, more like you, Lord, less of ourselves and more of you, God. I just, I love you so much. And I don't know what I'm doing here, God, but you do. And I just pray that for everyone who is listening, who doesn't know what they're doing today, God, may, may you give them solid, firm foundation of your truth, Lord. I pray that everything that comes from my mouth, Lord, would be honoring to your name. God, we praise you and we bless you. Amen. The Spiritually Lazy Saint, okay. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. We're all capable of being spiritually lazy saints. We try to stay off rough roads, of the rough roads of life, and our primary objective is to secure a peaceful retreat from the world. The ideas put forth in these verses from Hebrews 10 are those of stirring one and up one another and of keeping ourselves together. Both of these require initiative, our willingness to take the first step towards Christ's realization, not the initiative towards self-realization. To live a distant, withdrawn, and secluded life is diametrically opposed to, the spirit, to spirituality as Jesus Christ taught it. The true test of our spirituality occurs when we come up against injustice, degradation, uh, ingratitude, and turmoil, all of which have a tendency to make us spiritually lazy. While being tested, we want to use prayer and the Bible reading for a purpose of finding a quiet retreat. We use God only for the sake of getting peace and joy. We seek only our enjoyment in Jesus Christ, not a true realization of him. This is the first step in the wrong direction. All these things are see we are seeking are simply effects, yet we are trying to make them causes. Yes, I think it is right, said Peter, to stir you up by reminding you, 2 Peter 1.13. It is a most disturbing thing to be hit squarely in the stomach by someone used by God to stir us up. <sighs> Ain't that the truth? Someone who is full of spiritual activity, simple active work and, and spiritual activity are not the same thing. Active work can actually be the counterfeit of spiritual activity. The real danger in spiritual laziness is that we do not want to be stirred up. All we want to hear is about spiritual ret retirement from the world. Yet, Jesus Christ never encouraged the idea of re retirement. He says, go and tell my brethren, Matthew 28, 10. Hmm. So the last scripture that <clears throat> is referenced in this devotion is Second uh, Peter 1 13 and it says I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in this tent or to stir you spur you on so but what does it say before that uh, so 
in verse 5 it starts for this very reason make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to per perseverance godliness and to godliness mutual affection and to mutual affection love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But for, but for whomever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Doing for the sake of doing is nothing. And don't do, don't do things. Don't do things. Have relationship with God and then watch what flows out of it. I think that's the difference. I'm being challenged. The difference between just being active and spiritual activity is your heart state. Are you doing what you do because there are needs? Are you doing what you do because you love God and you and you need to act? You need to do these things because you love him and his goodness and his his joy and his love flow through you. And you want that to reach out and be live in action. Somebody needs to wash the floors. And it takes humility. Can you wash the floors because you love God's people? Or are you going to wash the floors because somebody's got to do it and you're tired of seeing them dirty? Yeah. I think the most awkward part about this is that I really do want you guys to to be part of this journey with me and so sometimes the processing is just it's a lot to think about when God is like so why are you doing that why have you been like doing what everybody sees as good and right and you're all like you're such a servant and it's like no no I'm doing what I've always been told is the right thing to make me look spiritual uh, and I hope that's not actually my heart but anyways uh, but that's it's something to think about ask yourself why are you doing this is it for the sake of doing it or is it because you love God so much that you will do it anything to serve him and that you just want his spirit his all of the attributes of his spirit the fruit of the spirit to just flow out of your life and touch the people around you and you'll you'll do whatever it takes whatever he asks of you to do that i i don't know i have to go pray Thank you so much for being with me. I pray that you only get the good stuff out of this. And I pray that you are blessed. Remember that God loves you so much. Bye.